As you might know, me and my friends love riding our old Simson mopeds, which as you can see after over 30 years of usage still work without a problem. But the electrical system of one of them is a bit weird, since it uses around 12 volt AC RMS for the headlights, while the rest of the electronics is built around a 6 volt DC battery. The problem is that 6 volts is not very useful if you want to connect modern appliances, because 12 volts is nowadays the standard. Now of course we could buy ourselves a more or less easy to install 12 volt conversion kits, but that is a bit expensive. So in this video let's find out how the electrical energy of such a moped is created and how we can use pretty cheap and easy to find parts to convert the old 6 volt system into a 12 volt one. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB whose new full automatic PCB batch production factory is being used since April. They produce 600,000 square meter of PCBs per month and you can get your own two layer prototype PCB for as low as $2. To start off we removed the mounting screws on the right side of the engine block in order to pull the lid off and thus reveal the electric generator of the mopeds. Now by turning on the motor and accelerating with the throttle lever, we can see how the red part of the generator starts spinning, while the insides, which apparently consist of three coils, stay in place. The red part of the generator, which in my example here is black, is called a magnet wheel, which like the name implies consists of six magnets positioned in a circular order. To understand the generator principle a bit better though, I also created an example coil by winding enamel copper wire around a ferromagnetic material. After a few dozens of turns I cut the wire, hooked both sides of my new coil up to the oscilloscope and then placed the coil inside the magnet wheel which I then rotated. As you can see on the oscilloscope, we create an AC voltage whose frequency and peak voltages are proportional to the revolutions per minute of the magnet wheel. And this is no wonder, because the induction law states that a voltage is induced into a coil if there is a changing magnetic flux going through it, which it is because of the six moving magnets. And by not connecting my oscilloscope but instead a load, we can see that with such a generator setup we can create electrical energy just like the moped does. So for the next steps I firstly got myself a circuit diagram of the Simson to find out that we got one coil for the headlights, one coil to charge the battery and power the backlights and one for the motor's ignition points. Those coils feature one common star point tied to ground and their wires are luckily color coded. That means it was time for me to unpack the oscilloscope, turn off the headlights disconnect the battery charger and hook up the coil wires as well as the ground point to the oscilloscope. As you can see we got two not nice looking AC sine waves, which are out of phase. Without a load the headlight one features a maximum of 60 volts AC RMS, while the battery charge one only goes up to half of that voltage, which is not what we want anymore. In order to switch over to a 12 volt system, we need to replace it with a 12 volt coil, which you can get pre-made from the internet for cheap. To accomplish this exchange we firstly removed the holding nuts of the magnet wheel and then used a special tool called Polrad Abzieher to remove it completely. Next we removed the two holding brackets and pulled the bed plate off. According to the wiring colors we desoldered the wires from the battery charge coil and then unscrewed its nuts to pull it off the bed plate. After then inserting the new coil we pretty much reversed all the working steps I just listed in order to restore the original state of the generator. 
And by once again connecting the oscilloscope, we can see that this time we got two terrible looking sine waves with pretty similar RMS voltage values. Now of course, we could use the AC voltage of one coil to power the headlights and use the other coil's rectified voltage in combination with a battery charger circuit to charge the new 12 volt 9 amp hour battery we got for the mopeds. But my friend wanted to replace the standard 35 watt headlight with a 55 watt one and thus he wanted to combine the power of the two coils to power the headlight and charge the battery. So the first thing I did was removing this component right here, which is labeled in the wiring schematic as the battery charger circuits. This component only uses an inductor to reduce the voltage at high RPMs and a diode to rectify the AC voltage, which is truly an old fashioned way to charge a battery. But before creating our own DIY charger circuit, let's add this full bridge rectifier with load to the two coil wires like it shown here. And make sure to not use the ground of the coil wires as the ground for the other electrical components, since that would partly short the coils and thus result in a terrible looking output voltage and the possible destruction of your cables. Instead, create a separate minus after the rectifier, which you can safely use for all the electrical components. But anyway, on the output of the rectifier, we can see that the voltage is now purely DC. And since the resistors were getting quite hot as well, this setup apparently also delivered sufficient energy. So with this rectifier, we more or less combined the power of the coils but make sure to use a full bridge, which is rated for the high current flow. At this point, it was time for me to think about a simple battery charger. And what came immediately to my mind was the LM317 adjustable voltage regulator, whose data sheet even features a battery charger circuit on its first page. According to the voltage out and short current formulas, I decided on a 0.1 ohm resistor for the short current and a 172 ohm resistor and 2 kilo ohm resistor for the voltage divider in order to achieve an output voltage of 14.45 volts, which should be suitable for the battery. After building up the circuit with the dead bug soldering style, I added a big dummy load and an input voltage of around 16 to 20 volts DC which as you can see created a stable maximum output voltage of 14.3 volts with a maximum current flow of around 1.5 amps, which is limited by the IC itself. The only thing I forgot is that the IC requires a heatsink, since it is converting the excess power into heat. So after adding that, I was happy with my prototype and thus started soldering all of the required components onto a piece of perf board and afterwards to one another according to the here shown final schematic. As soon as the circuit was complete, I tested it once again in order to confirm that it was working properly. Which it did while charging at least. But after removing the input voltage, I noticed that the battery discharged with a current value of around 7 milliamps, which would lead to a depleted battery in only 53 days. The reason are the low value resistors on the output and adjust pin of the regulator, whose values I could increase, but to keep it simple, I just added a diode in series to the outputs, which might decrease the battery voltage a bit but keeps the battery from draining. So next, after securing the circuits to the mopeds, I hooked it up to the output of the rectifier as well as to the battery. At this point, I tested the functionality of the new system, which as you can see powers the headlight and charges up the battery without a problem, which means this project was a success. Tidying up the wiring will be done by us on a later date. But for now I hope that this small conversion project inspired you to maybe fix a problem on your own instead of relying on expensive kits. I hope you liked this video. 
If so, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hitting the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time!